Judge, this is 2382CR91, the Commonwealth versus Brian Walsh. Can I have counsel identify themselves for the record, starting with the Commonwealth? Good morning, Your Honor. Greg Connor for the Commonwealth. Good morning, Mr. Connor. Good morning, Your Honor. Laura McLaughlin for the Commonwealth. Good morning, Ms. McLaughlin. Good morning, Your Honor. Tracy Miner, Mr. Walsh. Good morning, Ms. Miner. Good morning, Mr. Walsh. Good morning. Your Honor, may I proceed? Please. Are you ready for arraignment, counsel? I'm sorry. Are you ready for arraignment? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Walsh, 2382CR91001, Brian Walsh of Cohasset in the County of Norfolk, on or about January 1st, 2023, at Cohasset in the County of Norfolk, did assault and beat Anna Walsh with intent to murder her, and by such assault and beating did kill and murder said Anna Walsh in violation of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 265, Section 1, against the peace of said Commonwealth and contrary to the form of the statute in such case made and provided, a true bill assigned by the foreman of the grand jury and assistant district attorney for the Norfolk District. To this indictment for first-degree murder, sir, how do you wish to plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Thank you. Counsel, does your client waive the right to a formal arraignment with these other two indictments? Yes. Thank you. One count of misleading a police officer and one count of conveying a human body. How do you wish to plead, sir, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Thank you. You can have a seat. Question of bail. Thank you. All right. Mr. Conner. Thank you, Your Honor. The Commonwealth would ask that the defendant be held without bail as a result of being charged with 265, Section 1. Your Honor, if I may go into the allegations the Commonwealth has against the defendant and then go into my argument. Thank you. Your Honor, on January 4th, that morning, the defendant, Brian Walsh, first reported to his wife's employer in Washington, D.C., that his wife, Anna Walsh, had been missing since January 1st at approximately 6 a.m. He had reported that she had told him that she was leaving town for a work emergency and was flying out of Logan and that she would be returning back to Washington and was looking to find her at her employment. The Commonwealth has established that this was a lie. By this time that he had killed her, dismembered her, and disposed of her body. In early of 2022, Ms. Walsh had obtained employment at Tishman Spire in Washington, D.C. As a result of that, Tishman Spire had asked her to move to D.C. and work out of Washington, D.C. It is a national property management company, Your Honor. Ms. Walsh and Mr. Walsh sold the family home that was in Cohasset and purchased a residence in Washington, D.C. Mr. Walsh was unable to leave the state at that time because he was on pretrial conditions at the Federal District Court. They rented another home on Chief Justice Cushing Highway in Cohasset, and Ms. Walsh would commute from the property that they owned in D.C., working in D.C. during the week and being with the family on the weekends. In December of 2022, it had become evident that Mr. Walsh was suspecting his wife of having an affair. He was routinely visiting the Instagram page of one of her male friends, and on December 26th, his mother, with his input and direction, obtained and hired a private investigator to surveil Anna Walsh in Washington, D.C. On December 27th, the oldest son's iPad was used to research best states to get divorced in and worst states to get divorced in. On December 28th, Anna Walsh had dinner with a friend in Washington, D.C., and became uncharacteristically upset and told her friend that she believed that Mr. Walsh was going to be incarcerated as a result of this federal case and that she was prepared to leave him and take the children to Washington, D.C. On December 30th, she flew home and was with the family and expected not to return until January 3rd and was going to spend the long weekend with the family. On the 31st, she attended an exercise class. She also got her nails done at a local salon and had made arrangements for a family friend, her former employer, to come over their home on Chief Justice Cushing Highway for a dinner to celebrate New Year's Eve. That family friend said he got there at approximately 8 p.m. and that the children were asleep and that Mr. Walsh cooked dinner for the three of them. At around 10 p.m., one of their children came downstairs, socialized with the adults, and went back upstairs approximately 20 minutes later. The family friend left at approximately 1.30 a.m. on January 1st 
and that is the last time someone has seen Anna Walsh alive outside of the defendant and his family. What happens is later on in the early morning hours at approximately 4.50 a.m., the oldest child's iPad begins to visit websites that concern how long does it take for a dead body to smell, how long does it take for someone to be missing to be declared dead. It also uh, visited websites and made numerous searches on this matter at 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Included was also how long someone must go missing in order to collect, and there was a visit of a website for luxury watches. At 2 p.m. on January 1st, the, child's ba the children's babysitter arrived at the Cohasset home. This was previously arranged with Mr. Walsh. Mr. Walsh had told uh, the babysitter that he and his wife initially were going to go out for a late brunch, New Year's Day brunch that day. But then he told the babysitter that Anna Walsh had returned to Washington, D.C. Uh, that morning at approximately 6 a.m. for a work emergency and that he needed to visit his mother in Swampscott and asked the babysitter to stay. He had also told the babysitter and the family friend that he had lost his phone, and uh, he had told the family friend that he had felt somewhat free having lost his phone. Subsequent analysis of his phone determined that it was actually plugged in the morning of January 1st. Um, However, while the phone stayed at, his phone stayed at the house in Chief Justice Cushing Highway in Cohasset, the oldest child's cell phone did not. On January 1st, the oldest child's cell phone uh, shows native location data that traveled to Shaw's supermarket and Walgreens in Cohasset. At the time the phone is at those stores, the defendant is seen walking in on store surveillance videos by himself. It then travels later on that afternoon, approximately 5 to 5.30 p.m., to Vinnin Liquors in Swanscott. Surveillance video shows the defendant's vehicle and uh, the defendant arriving there by himself, bypassing the store, going to a dumpster in the parking lot of the store, disposing of items, then returning to his car. After it goes to Vinnin Liquors, it goes across the street to an apartment complex where the defendant's mother resides. The native location from the oldest child's cell, cell phone shows that it is by the dumpster for that apartment complex. It then travels to Lowe's in Danvers. At that time where the phone is showing that it's at Lowe's in Danvers, the defendant walks into Lowe's in Danvers by himself on store surveillance video. He is seen purchasing numerous items, including five Lowe's five-gallon buckets, a Lennox high-tension hacksaw, 48 terry cloth towels, a framing hammer, Tyvek full coverage suit, shoe guards, mop, snips, 200 disposable rags, trash bags, Murphy oil soap, and other cleaning products. It then travels to CVS in Danvers, where Mr. Walsh is again seen on video by himself purchasing 13 different types of hydrogen peroxide. It then travels to Stop and Shop in Swampscott, where Mr. Walsh can be seen buying three 64-ounce jugs of ammonia. The device then travels back to Mr. Walsh's mother's apartment. Mrs. Mr. Walsh's mother stated that he did arrive that evening, informed her that Anna had returned to D.C. for a work emergency. At 7.15 p.m., Ms. Walsh's mother then calls her private investigator and leaves a message indicating that Anna Walsh has returned back to D.C. earlier than expected. Mr. Walsh returned home at approximately 8.30 p.m. on the 1st. At that point in time, the babysitter is, has left with him with the children who are asleep. From 2 a.m. to approximately 5.30 a.m., the oldest child's iPad searched and visited websites concerning instructions on how to clean blood and DNA from objects, how to remove SIM cards from phones, how to mix ammonia, and search for apartment complex in Brockton, Massachusetts. At 8 a.m., the babysitter returned to the Walsh residence. Mr. Walsh left the residence that morning and is on surveillance at Home Goods in Norwell, purchasing three area rugs and scented candles. The babysitter would state that by the end of the week, she had noticed that the downstairs area rugs had been replaced, as well as a kitchen trash can. Mr. Walsh returned from Home Goods 
And the oldest child at this point in time had discovered the cell, his missing cell phone in a sibling's room. However, the oldest child's iPad continued to make search, searches on websites detailing how long Lowe's maintained security videos, how apartments maintain uh, surveillance, and numerous articles about dismembering a human body. Around 4 p.m. on January 2nd, Mr. Walls traveled alone to Home Depot in Rockland, and there he is seen on video purchasing three more additional five-gallon buckets with leak-proof lids, a hatchet, plastic sheeting, 24 pounds of baking soda, and a second Tyvek suit. He then traveled to the Derby Street Shops, Your Honor, where his car is seen traveling behind the shops in the area of the dumpsters, and then eventually will return to the shops where he is by himself, where he goes to uh, a local restaurant and purchases takeout. Mr. Walsh returned to his home, the babysitter department, and at that evening on January 2nd, he was alone by himself in his home, except for his sleeping children. From 1 a.m., or approximately 1, 18 a.m. to 7 a.m., the oldest child's iPad again searches for and visits websites to discuss the odor, removing the odor of decomposing bodies. It also visits aftermath.com. Now, this is a company that cleans up crime scenes. It also visited and uh, looked at websites for detecting how blood can be uh, how blood can be detected using fluorescein and how to remove blood stains from concrete. Notably, the basement floor in the in the uh, home in Cohasset is a concrete floor. This was not accessed by Mr. Walsh's mother or the babysitter that first week in January and had a security lock at the top of it that would prevent the children from gaining access to the basement. On January 3rd, Mr. Walsh brought his children to daycare and then into school and returned to the Cohasset home. At 8.30 a.m., Mr. Walsh makes his first attempt to contact his wife's cell phone by placing a call that goes unanswered. He would do this three more times at approximately 2.30 p.m. that day. At 10.30 a.m. on the 3rd, Mr. Walsh texted one of Anna's friends in Washington, D.C. and asked if, he, if she had seen Anna. On the 3rd, Mr. Walsh had made no attempts to contact the police, hospital, airlines, taxi, her work to locate Ms. Walsh. On the afternoon of the 3rd, Mr. Walsh visited three different apartment complexes in Abington and one in Brockton. Video from these complexes captured Mr. Walsh in the area of the dumpsters for three of these complexes. One video showed him looking into a dumpster and not putting anything into it. A second captures him taking items from his SUV by the area of the dumpster. And then the third depicts Mr. Walsh supposing uh, a bag that appears to be heavy into the dumpster. On January 4th, at 10.04 a.m., the person that Mr. Walsh had texted the day before responds to him and asks if he has heard from Anna. Ten minutes later, Mr. Walsh then calls the building that Anna Walsh worked at in D.C. and reports her missing. Five minutes after that, he texts back to the friend and says, work is looking for her. At 10.30 is when work calls Mr. Walsh and begins the process of trying to find Ms. Anna Walsh. After talking with Mr. Brian Walsh, Dishman Spire employees contact their local and national offices. They uh, send out emails. They even go to her home to try and find Ms. Ms. Walsh. They even also be contacted local hospitals. They, during their calls, they encouraged Mr. Walsh to report her missing to the Cohasset police. At 11, approximately 11.40 a.m. on January 4th, Tishman Spire Security not notifies Cohasset police. This is the first time law enforcement is notified that Anna Walsh is missing. Cohasset police would travel to Mr. Walsh's home at approximately noon that day, and, they would, and he would tell them about how a dinner guest had left on January 1st and informed them and then told Cohasset police how Anna Walsh had then informed him that she needed to go back to D.C. for a work emergency, that she left between 6 a.m., and that when and he would tell police that day when she left, she was wearing a short black coat, blue-gray hunter boots, had, and also had a black Prada purse. 
He told the uh, local police that his oldest child had seen uh, his wife take a taxi that morning. Cohasset police from there on would attempt to try and locate Anna Walsh by contacting airlines, taxis, Uber, Lyft, and also attempting to get cell phone records. By January 5th, Cohasset police had established that Anna Walsh had not flown to Washington, D.C. on JetBlue, the normal airline she takes, and that she had a return flight for January 3rd. They also learned that she had not left the country flying out of Logan Airport. They, noted they had learned that she had not used Uber, Lyft, and they had contacted local taxi companies, and none had gone to the, that residence. Cell phone records reveal that the last connection her phone signaled off of a tower was sometime between 3 and 4 a.m. on January 2nd, and that tower provided coverage for the Walsh home in Cohasset. On the 5th, Cohasset also notified state police to aid them in their investigation. The Massachusetts State Police notified and collected dozens of officers to come and help search the area, which included doing canvases of the area, searching the woods of the area, utilizing a dive team to search the backyard pool and the air wing. Both Cohasset and state police also sent detectives to Washington, D.C. in an effort to locate Anna Walsh. At approximately 9.30 a.m. on January 5th, while law enforcement is undergoing all this searching, the defendant travels to his mother's apartment building in Swampscott, and his phone shows through native location data that it is in the area of the dumpster. He would then speak to detectives later on that evening, and he would again tell them that, that Anna Lott Walsh had left for a work emergency between 6 and 7 a.m. on the 1st with a black Prada bag, a short black coat, a Louis Vuitton overnight bag, hunter boots, and potentially an Hermes watch. On the 6th, detectives spoke with Mr. Walsh again, and he agreed to turn over the digital devices from his home, which included the, son's iPad, the, the child's iPad and his cell phone and the child's cell phone. In, from the 6th into the 7th, investigators would download and search these devices. And in doing so, they would see the internet history of the iPad. They would see the noted location data from the two phones. It had become clear at this point into the, fit, into the 7th that the defendant had not told the truth about the whereabouts of Ms. Walsh and his whereabouts as well. For on the 6th, Your Honor, he had told investigators that um, he had gone to CVS and Whole Foods in the Swampscott area. Police officers went to both of those locations and could not find surveillance video of him in those two stores. On the 8th, officers obtained search warrants for Mr. Walsh's home and vehicle, and began the processes of searching those, those items over the next two days. In the basement, Your Honor, there were found eight brown, red-brown stains that initially tested positive for the presence of blood. One of those stains has subsequently gone to the lab and did not pass confirmatory testing. Mr. Walsh's Volvo SUV also tested positive for the presumptive presence of blood in the driver's side seat control areas, the passenger floor mats, and the rear trunk area. On the 8th, by, the, by January 8th, Your Honor, all of the dumpsters that police could identify that Mr. Walsh had gone to with the exception of going to the Swampscott dumpster on the 5th, had been emptied and taken to CMAS. CMAS is a large-scale waste-to-energy recycling facility where the contents of the dumpsters are shredded and incinerated. This process goes on 24 hours a day, and by that time, by the 8th, all of those contents had been incinerated, leaving behind only a fine ash. However, law enforcement was able to go to the Swampscott dumpster. In the Swampscott dumpster, they found items, including a set of Volkswagen keys, Anna Walsh's COVID vaccination card, an Hermes watch identical to what Anna Walsh was known to wear, 
blue gray hunter boots, a black product purse, and a short black coat. Also located in the dumpster, Your Honor, were rugs consistent with those that had been found that were in the living room and the kitchen of the Cohasset home. These rugs contained red brown staining as well, and a piece of a Gucci necklace consistent with one that Anna Walsh wore was found within one of the two rugs. The dumpster contained numerous items identical to those that Mr. Walsh had purchased at Lowe's, which included a Tyvek suit, a, high, a Lennox high-tension hacksaw, hammer, hatchet, and snips. The hatchet was purchased at Home Depot. The Tyvek suit had a red-brown stain on the exterior. The, the stain was tested, and Anna Walsh's uh, DNA was determined to be a contributor. The hacksaw that was, had red-brown staining in several areas, when it was disassembled, a small fragment of bone was recovered. These items have been, uh, are being processed for DNA. Also in the investigation, it was determined that in 2001, Anna Walsh had taken out approximately $2.2 million in life insurance on herself, where Brian Walsh is the sole beneficiary. And as a result of working at Tishman Spire, she has an additional more than $400,000 life insurance policy where he was the sole beneficiary. In total, her life insurance is to over $2.7 million where the defendant was a sole beneficiary. Your Honor, as a result of the extensive investigation that was done into this case, the defendant's grave incentive to flee of being charged with murder, and that he has one open matter, I would ask that the defendant be held without bail. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Miner. Thank you, Your Honor. The defense would ask that bail be set at $250,000 in cash. Um, and I can respond to some of the points sure. that um, the prosecutor has made. Your Honor, it has been four months since Anna Walsh has last been seen. It was on January 1st um, of this year. As Your Honor knows, under Massachusetts law, a person is not presumed dead. Uh, because they're missing for, for a period of seven years, because it is easy for a single person to disappear if they want to disappear. In that four months, there's been no body found. There's been no indication of if she died, how she died. There's no murder weapon. There's no motive. The government suggests that Mr. Uh, that Brian Walsh suspected his wife of an affair, but there's really no evidence of that. His, his mother did hire a private investigator shortly before New Year's that, um, that year. She told Mr. Walsh that she was doing that. He said she was crazy, Anna's a good girl, but go ahead, you'll be proved wrong. The investigator never found any evidence of an affair because they didn't actually have time to start doing anything before Anna went missing. Mr. Walsh had no idea that his wife was having an affair until he learned it in discovery in this case. There was a friend over. The last time she was seen was New Year's Eve. They were having Mr. Walsh made dinner for the friend. They were having a celebratory New Year's Eve dinner. They were having champagne. They each signed um, the outside box of the champagne bottle saying that 2023 was going to be their best year ever, that they were a triumvirate, that, that, that there was only good things going to happen in 2023. Um, there was no indication of any discord, no silences, no uh, feeling that there was anything but happiness between the couple. Um, the friend did leave at 1.30 in the morning, uh, and that was the last time that, that she was seen uh, by an adult. With respect to the Google searches, Your Honor, yes, I get that they're problematic. Um, but there were other Google searches that the prosecutor didn't mess, me, mention, including a search of how to set up a charitable corporation to give away large lottery winnings tax-free. Well, Mr. Walsh never won a large amount of money in the, in the lottery, and Mr. Walsh never set up a charitable contribution. 
Um, there were also Google searches of best places to go for, in, for a family vacation in 20, I well, didn't say in 2023, best places to go for family vacations, all in the same time period, Your Honor. With respect to the flood in the basement, the, the, the um, police did take eight separate swabs from the basement, which they thought contained blood. One of the eight that we know of was sent, for, sent to the lab for a confirmatory test. It came back negative. We don't, I don't know if the other seven were just waiting for them to come back or if they just decided to abandon that um, when one came back negative and not spend the money to do the other seven. But while it may be that the police who saw the, the little swabs, uh, the spots, which looked really like rust, um, it's an old basement, it's an old house, thought it was blood, um, at least the one that was tested came back negative. With respect to the Tyvek suit, Your Honor, we did get the forensics back from that, from the DA. It does test positive by a large number for Anna Walsh's DNA. It also tests positive for another unknown person's DNA. And when they tried to match Brian Walsh's DNA to that unknown DNA, it, they could, it came back very, very small. Uh, infinitesimally small, so that, well, you can't rule him out. You can, the conclusion was you can't rule him in. So it suggests that there was another, at least another person's DNA on that Tyvek suit. With respect to cleaning supplies, yes, Mr. Walsh bought a lot of cleaning supplies. Many of them were still in the basement, untouched. The police photographed them. Those photographs were pre presented in um, the discovery. Your Honor, oh, with respect to, to CBS and Whole Foods, they did, Mr., um, they did interview Mr. Walsh. He said he went to CBS. He didn't say which one. They assumed it was Swampscott. That's not because he said it was in Swampscott. They actually followed up with me and said, can you get me um, which CBS he went to? Got back to them, said Danvers, and guess what? That's where he was. They got the video. We told them which CBS it was. The fact that they went to the wrong one at the beginning was no fault of Mr. Walsh's. With respect to Whole Foods, your Honor, Whole Foods is right next to Bennett Liquors, where the prosecutor himself said that they saw Mr. Walsh in the parking lot that um, day. Mr. Walsh has been cooperative with the police from day one. As the prosecutor indicated, he consented to give his phones to the, to the police. He consented to give um, the iPads to the police. He allowed three consent searches of the place, including with uh, blood-sniffing canines, where the canines came up with nothing. Um, he consented to draining the, the, the home's pool, which came up with nothing. He's been nothing but cooperative in this. Um, he did call the employer on Wednesday when, when she was gone for three days and asked if she was there. Your Honor, that followed a pattern. Since um, Thanksgiving, Anna Walsh was gone, was not being able to be contacted for periods of days at a time. When Brian asked her about that, she said, oh, don't be a worry, worry, don't call my employer. He waited three days to call her employer, assuming she had gone back to D.C. as he said, as she said she was going to, and was involved in a work emergency. When talking to Tishman Spire, the head of security said that they would notify the police because the security person um, there had contacts with law enforcement. And they, in fact, did contact both the Washington, D.C. police and the Cohasset police. The Cohasset police came out to the home in, in Cohasset that afternoon, and Mr. Walsh gave two interviews on that same day. Your Honor, um, the prosecution also suggests maybe a financial motive because of life insurance policies, but there's no evidence Mr. Walsh was in the least bit um, needing of money. His mother, as the prosecution knows, is wealthy. She's giving, given tens of thousands of dollars to Anna and to Brian. He was not in need of anything, nor were his children. 
Your Honor, and that brings me to the point of Mr. Walsh has been the children. He has three young children who he has been the primary caregiver since the, each of those boy, each of those children were born. He's gotten them up, he's gotten them clothed, he's gotten them bathed, he's taken them to school, he's taken them to appointments, he's taken them to the beach. He was the primary caregiver of those children. Uh, Anna worked a lot. She was at home on nights and weekends even when she was working in Boston. She moved to D.C. for a job in uh, March of 2022 where she would come home on weekends if she could. Not every weekend and even on weekends when she was home she spent a fair amount of time without being with the children. Mr. Walsh is the, is the primary caregiver, always has been. It, it may be somewhat easy to disappear if you're an adult and single. It is not easy to disappear with three young children. Um, those children live in, in Massachusetts. The only family he has are the three young children, his mother, who also lives in Massachusetts. So I would suggest that, that there is no risk of flight here. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clark? I'm finding two dates, a pre-trial conference and a pre-trial hearing date. Could I suggest August 23rd? Let me just check, Jimmy. Sure. Because it will be with me. Yep. That's fine with the defense. Okay, that, that's fine. Great, August 23rd, and then a pre-trial hearing date, I'd suggest something in October, not a Thursday. And after maybe the end of October, Jim? Yes, after the 13th. Could I suggest October 25th, another Wednesday? No, Jim, can we go? I'm out for two weeks. I'm out the week of the 16th and the 23rd. Okay. okay. Just so you know, I've been assigned this case. Thank yes, Your Honor. Could we have the first week in November? Sure. So I'm well, out to middle weeks in October. How about one, November one? Uh, that might be difficult for me. Could we do the second? Yes. You're the yes, end. because I'll be yeah. over there. Can you do, Council? Can you do November second? Yes. Great. Uh, Mr. Walsh, you're going to be held without bail. Your matter is continued 823 for pre-trial conference, 2 p.m. and 11:223 for pre-trial hearing, also 2 p.m. Council, do you want uh, your client brought in on the pre-trial conference? Okay, uh, Dan. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Mr. Clark.